problems in the game. Hey everybody, I am Tom Vassell and welcome to Dice Tower Live Q&A uh, with me. Today is July 17th, 2018. So we're going to start off here with a quick game of Speech Breaker, doo -doo -doo -doo, which is a game from Hasbro, doo -doo -doo -doo, which looks pretty bad. So this is going to be hard for you to understand what's going on, possibly, but I'm going to be trying to get you to guess some words on these cards, and I'm going to be giving it through a news story. The problem is I'm wearing a pair of headphones here that once I start this up are going to be repeating what I say back to me about a second after I say it, which makes it harder for me to actually, you know, give the thing. But maybe you have to guess the words. You need to guess the words who, what, and where, okay? So what are the rules for this though? Like, I, I, I'm assuming I can't say, um, describe the scene. You may not say any of the words in the cards. Oh. Okay, so it's a who, what, and where. Weird. All right, here we go. I didn't actually put the battery case back on very strong because I want to take these batteries back out because I'm not wasting my good batteries on this. All right, speech breaker. Do -do -do. Hey everybody, welcome to ABC News, Pensacola, Florida. Why am I saying Pensacola? I live in Homestead now, but that's not the point. All right, so there's a news story because there was a murder that happened in a car. And this is the kind of car that picks up people from one spot and takes them to another, but it's not Uber or Lyft. Um, so this guy picked up some, the, the murderer, I guess, and he was going along consistently telling how good he was at things. Well, that was a fast 30 seconds. I didn't even get to the where. Hmm. Well, let me try that again. Okay, so who, what, and where? <laughs> Let's try it faster. Here we go. Same thing. Where's the button? There it is. Hey folks, my name is Tom Vassell from Homestead, Florida, and today we're talking about a murder that happened in a car that picks people up from one location and goes to the other location. The passenger in the car was constantly telling the driver how awesome he was, how awesome his life was, which is why the cab driver murdered him. Instead of taking him to the best clothes store in America that I go to because it's fairly inexpensive and they carry my size. All right, so that... Man, that's annoying. All right. Ooh, I can hear again. All right. So it's a who, what, and where. All right. So the who. <laughs> Welcome to those who come in. Yes, this is a Q&A. We'll be doing Q&A in just a second. The who, um, what was going on, and where. Uh, murder is not the what. So where? Men's warehouse now. All right. Maybe Men's Warehouse is a good place. Alrighty. Well. There we go. So, anyhow. Okay, so the who is a cab driver. The what was bragging. And the where was Coles. Alright. Well, hello. Hello. I'm feeling like I'm hearing myself slightly in the background. Well, anyway, uh, if you missed it, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to live Q&A, July 17th, 2018. I'll be taking your questions. I'll talk about some stuff, and then we'll end. Uh, if you're coming to Gen Con, don't forget to sign up for our different Gen Con shows that we're doing. I hope to see you guys there. Make sure you come by our booth. That is only, that's two weeks from today that we go. So I have a lot of Gen Con stuff to get done before then and a lot of different reviews and things. You'll be seeing some reviews go up today, tomorrow, and so on. We got a lot of different games that we'll be talking about, of course. We're going to be doing a live play with Ryan Lockett teaching us Empires of the Void 2. That's going to be going up this coming Thursday. So, or we're doing that this coming Thursday, so just tune in for that. And Sam's doing a couple live things later this week. We also have a top 10 coming up this week, so I'm sure you guys have been waiting for one of those to come again. I know this, so we'll be having a top 10 next week also. All right, so let's see. Questions. 
Does Lords of Hellas finally fill that Nexus Op gap for you? I like Lords of Hellas a lot, but it's not really like Nexus Ops. It's a much more involved game. There's more going on in, ne in, in, in Lords of Hellas. Nexus Ops is a really simple, small, attacky type game. Um, I don't know anything about Death May Die. I don't know how the game plays at all. You'd have to ask Sam about that one. Uh, let's see. First time at Gen Con this year, we're bringing an 11-year-old girl. Is it pretty safe or does she need to stay in arm's length? That all depends on your parenting. If I took an 11-year-old girl to Gen Con, I would not let her out of my sight. I let Melody wander around when she was 16. Um, and that's it. I, I wouldn't have actually gone lower than that because just it's a big it's a big place. There's a lot going on. I mean, again, that's up to each parent. That's just what I would do. What happened with the critical mass release? Well, I don't know. It's coming out at, at Gen Con, I believe. And then the actual the full game is being released soon to the to the public this month or next month. Um what shows do you have for Gen Con? I have your seminar for game media and the live show. Well, that's it. <laughs> but that shows. That's two. Um, what's my current favorite solo game? Well, Gloomhaven, for sure. Tom, do you like Tigris and Euphrates at the moment? Oh, that's definitely a good question because my opinion of Tigris and Euphrates changes at the moment. It really does. It's one of the most fluctuating games in my... Uh, in my uh, collect, well, not collection, I don't own it, but the ones that I played. I would probably play it right now and have a good time with it until I got murdered by a bunch of red tiles. I'm very curious about the sequel, so I'm looking forward to that. Is there a total how much money was raised for the Jack Vassal Fund at Dice Tower Con? I don't know the exact number, but it was around 20000 Actually, it's a little bit less than 20000 because there was credit card fees and stuff. But the money raised was over 20000 Um, there's a lot of uh, Kickstarters and things that I don't know a lot about that people are asking me about, and I don't have any thoughts. Any thoughts I have on Kickstarter, seriously, any thoughts I have on Kickstarter, I put in my Kickstarter show, so go check that out. That is my entirety of some of thoughts on Kickstarter, really. Um, I know there's this big scandal going on with Overturn right now where the evidence is pretty overwhelming that they kind of plagiarized there, which is kind of a phenomenon to me how many people are still backing it, which means people haven't, well, I mean, if you back something and then don't follow the project, how would you know? Um, which game component drop took the longest to clean up? Battlecon War of Endines took a long time because there were so many different cards in that one. Um, what do you think about the story in Gloomhaven? When I played it, I didn't feel like the story came through strong enough. I think the story is okay. I, uh, I mean, it's, I thought the story was not, it's not a horrible story. It's just a, uh, it's, it's a story, right? I mean, it works. It's not a strong story when I'm more concentrating on the combat that's in the game than the story. Um, I'm going to take a drink here briefly. Uh, to attend a Dice Hour event at Essen, I need to get tickets at the booth. Yeah, you need to get tickets at our booth. Seventh Continent favorite expansions? I don't know that there is it. I haven't even played the expansion for the Seventh Continent yet. All right, here's a good question. If you were to place your money on one of these games hitting the top 100 BGG this year, which of the following would it be? Coimbra, Detective, or Tutahu Icon, or however you pronounce that. I don't know anything about the last one. Um, uh, I'm going to say none of them. We'll see if I'm right. Let's see. Are you going to review Forged Realms, that game from the Boring Unboxing stream? The one that looks like a trading card game. Maybe. I don't know. I have a lot of games to review, folks. There are so many games and piles of all over the place. Random thought of the day. Stretch goal for the next Dice Tower Kickstarter. Tommy to bowl of cereal. No! Again, one of my things that I try not to do are things I don't like. And I don't like cereal, so why would I eat it? I haven't eaten cereal in... 
I've been eating a bowl of cereal. Um, in 24 years. When I left the house, I was like, Mom, I swear a great oath that I will never eat another bowl of cereal. And she said, you're an idiot. I was like, all right. but And I haven't. I've never eaten cereal since. Um, and yeah, I know. People always like, what? How do you not like cereal? I just don't like it. I don't like any of it. I especially don't like putting milk on it. There are many other things that I, you can eat for breakfast. And again, I don't understand why we're constrained by these cultural restrictions that have been placed upon us where certain foods are breakfast foods only. That makes no sense to me. I was at the breakfast yesterday with someone and uh, we were at IHOP and so I'm trying to eat healthy, I'm trying to lose weight. And I ordered tilapia and the, and the waiter was like, what? I'm like, what? Why can't you have tilapia for breakfast? Seems like a decent breakfast to me. Nothing wrong with eating fish to start the day off. Um, what am I drinking? Water. Cool, clear water. Now that all the rooms are filled in the crews, when will the room assignments be done? I don't know. Jason will do them at a certain point. We, it has to be like a certain number of days before the crew starts or whatever. That's a Jason question. Top 10 breakfast cereals. None, 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 If I was forced to eat one from back in the day, probably uh, Cookie Crisp or Life. How do I get tickets to the Dice Tower show at Gen Con? You need to go and buy a ticket through Gen Con. Um, they're online uh, through the Gen Con event finder. Uh, let's see here. Was your nickname at school Vaseline? Not really. I think a few people call me that, but see, it kind of spoils the joke. Often when I call a place or introduce myself, I'll be like, my name's Tom Vassal. That's Vassal like Vaseline. And if I say it automatically, then they don't have anything to say back. Also, I'm not really phased by that sort of thing. Like, people call me all kinds of weird names that didn't really bother me. Um... When are you going to play that festival game? Probably not. <laughs> what was the last cereal you ate 24 years ago? That I don't remember, but probably life. Um, do you use a PC or Mac for your live streams? We use a device, actually. It's a, a, a live stream device, which is I test technically has Windows on it, so I guess you'd call it a PC. For my computer here, I'm using a Mac. Um, How do you choose which games to review? That's a very long answer to that, but the answer basically is the ones I feel like reviewing. There are so many. We are flooded with the games all the time. I posted a boring unboxing yesterday of the games that I got uh, over the weekend were some of the end games. Today I recorded almost another complete boring unboxing of games that came in yesterday. A single day, I think 12, 13 games showed up. I review 12 games a week at most, right? And so it's just we, we can't keep up with all these. I mean, this speech breaker thing you're seeing here, that's one of the games that came in today. This is probably the when you're going to see it. Maybe we'll do a review of it. Who knows? My Little Scythe or Stuffed Fables for kids less than eight? Sure, but play them with your kids. Good for you for eating healthy. Well, uh, don't, don't praise me too much. Today is day eight. I haven't messed up one time. Um, the, uh, I definitely need to lose weight for sure. Um, my friend Mark Street has been really encouraging in this regard. He's lost well over 100 pounds um, and looks fantastic. Uh, and, you know, really the, the secret to his losing weight is the one that I've known all along. And basically it's, you know, you exercise and you eat less food. There's a gazillion diets out there, like half the people in my church are on a keto diet and there's always some newfangled diet. I don't want to be on a newfangled diet. I don't want to have to sit there and think, can I eat this or not? You just eat less calories. That's all there is to it. I have a program on my phone that I'm using. And on my phone, I'm, oh, yeah, I do have my phone on me. I have a, my phone, and I'm using a thing called, uh, what's it called? F uh, my Fitness Pal. But there's a gazillion out there. So this I keep track of. It helps me out like a game. I can keep track of my 
my progress in my weight, where it started, where it's at now, ups and downs. I put in here how many calories I eat. Like today for lunch, I'm eating a salad. And again, I know, for example, that there are foods that are healthier for you. I eat healthy food for breakfast and lunch. But if I want to eat something, quote unquote, unhealthy, I'll do that occasionally. But again, watching the calories. And that's pretty much, it's going to work. Every time I talk about losing weight, I always get emails from people saying, let me tell you about this great diet. I'm sure it's great. It's not the question of doing it or how to do it. It's a question of, hey, um, you just got to have the willpower. Again, eight days with Gen Con on the horizon. That will be the tough one. Can I make it through Gen Con? I think I can. So, salmon is amazing for breakfast. There's all kinds of things that are amazing for breakfast. I think the guy was more amazed someone would order fish at IHOP. Meh. We're down in the south. I don't care. We're down. There's fish all over the place. I didn't feel like ordering the pancakes or the eggs or the burgers. So I got the fish. The bottom 10 breakfast cereals. I can tell you the, the cereals I hate. I hate Cheerios. I hate Kicks with a passion. I have no idea how anyone likes Kicks. I'm sorry. Captain Crunch is not a cereal that I hate. Actually, as a kid, I thought I liked Captain Crunch more than others. But when Captain Crunch gets soggy, it is the worst thing in existence. It is like literal snot in a bowl. Um, and as the years have went by, as I got older and older, Fruit Loops, I really dislike that weird flavor to the point now where if I eat something, I'm like, is this Fruit Loop flavored? It has that really strong, odd flavor. Lucky Charms without the marshmallows was pretty gross, too. Top 10 TV theme songs. I don't have a top 10 th th TV theme songs, but I got some I can list. I like um, the theme song from Chuck. Bad Dog, uh, uh, um, the, the theme song, is it Tank, I think it's called? Not Bad Dog, No Biscuit. Uh, Tank from uh, Cowboy Bebop. I really like the Cowboy Bebop theme song. Um, I like the Cheers theme song for some reason. Although I think really, like if you're where you go and everyone knows your name is a bar, that's kind of a, that's kind of a sad song actually. But um, Happy Days, I like Happy Days a lot. Hawaii Five O for sure. Um, nowadays theme songs are not quite as in oh Game of Thrones is a great great theme song for sure. Um, the John Adams miniseries had a great great uh, opening thing. Uh, Fat Albert. I really like the Fat Albert theme song. Those are some that I like. Would you be willing to share the schedule for upcoming top 10 lists? Well, the next top 10 list is not going to be that big of a surprise. It's going to be top 10 games we're looking forward to seeing at Gen Con. That's easy enough. After that, you'll have to wait and see. Although, the, we just posted a, a top 10 families games today. Me and Eric, uh, we did a... Um, the, uh, what did we do? We did uh, top 10 family games, but we did personal family stories to ourselves. Any thoughts on reviewing or ranking outdoor games like Bocce, Croquet, Cube? I don't know how to say K-U-U-B, etc. Maybe. I, I've reviewed a few of things like that before. Um, stuff fables with only adults? I wouldn't do it, but some people like it. To me, the stories are too youngish for me. Like, I don't know that I would want to sit around with a bunch of other adults and play a game where we're trying to stop a kid from wetting the bed. It doesn't seem like it works for me, but again, maybe I'm, a, I'm like, I don't know that I'd play My Little Scythe with a bunch of adults either. There's just a lot of games I have that I play with kids, and then there's games I have I play with adults. Sure, you can mix the two of them, and you can play back and forth, but meh. Um, do you like near and far story campaign or characters campaigns better? Probably the story campaign. I do like the character campaigns. They're a lot of fun, but the story campaign's better. Speaking of which, um, today my review of the expansion for uh, the Amber Mines is going up for near and far, so you can check that out. That'll probably be around 1 o'clock. What kind of salads for lunch? I don't know. I haven't looked at it yet. My wife made it for me. Some salad with, I know there's chicken in it, so that's all I know.
Is El Grande still a game worth buying as an entry in an area control, or are there better introductory area control games? There might be better ones. I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably better ones maybe for introductory purposes, but it still holds up well, I think. I would like to see someone make a really nice looking version of it at some point. Would you rather play a longer or shorter game? At any given moment, that's probably going to change, but probably a shorter game. However, me and uh, Derek and a friend of ours, uh, Vince, we got together this past Saturday and we played through the new uh, Scythe campaign, The Rise of Fenris. And we, that, that's an eight game campaign and we played through five of those campaigns and it took a, five of those games and it took us ten, uh, two, six, six and a half to seven hours maybe, right? We played them straight through. We paused briefly, but for the most part we played straight through and man, oh man, time flew by. It was so much fun. But if you told me I was going to play a seven and a half hour, six and seven hour game, I'd be like, uh, nope, I'm out. So it all depends, you know, where I'm at at any given point. You're probably wondering, what do you think of that game? That's a next week review, The Rise of Fenris. Come back then. For Mar Marvel Legendary Setup, do you and your team pick and choose every time, or do you use an app to help you out? I heard there's an app. Maybe I'll use it, but I just pick and choose. Um, me and Melody were just, Melody was just putting it all away from me, uh, sorting it out the other day and it's like oh my goodness there's so much because i just reviewed world war hulk so fine now i'm done with that one now putting it back with everything else and it's like oh my goodness there is so much in this game they stop stop don't make any more legendary i know i'm gonna get it if you do but don't get make any more Now a bunch of people are talking about their favorite theme songs. I don't, I don't care about the Firefly theme song. Oh, Malcolm in the Middle. That's true. I like that theme song a lot. D12 or D20, make a choice. D12. At Gen Con, are you at all involved in the retailer educational game on day on Wednesday? No. Someone offered me an opportunity, but it kind of fell through and didn't work out. And some, some year I might do something for that. Sanford and Sun theme song, yeah, that's a good one. Um, how long did it take to set up your new studio space? Is it still a work in progress? It's mostly done. You'll notice that I had a guy come in and paint some things. I'm gonna probably have him paint a few things on these backboards here for us too. But for the most part, the studio is done. I'm constantly looking for new things to put on the shelves here. You know, just various knickknacks and things. So that's kind of a work in progress. I was hoping to find some stuff maybe on Amazon Prime, but I don't know about you all, but Prime Day seemed kind of bleh this time. I, I couldn't even get on yesterday. And today when I went to look for, when I woke up, I went to look around a little bit and it just, eh. I mean, I don't want to buy something to buy something, right? I haven't bought anything for Amazon Prime Day yet because I'm not going there just to buy stuff. It needs to be something I want or need, and I haven't seen anything like that yet. Also, it doesn't seem to be working very well. Uh, let's see here. Have you heard of... Habitica, it's an app that helps you develop positive habits in RPG format. You gain experience and goal for checking off to-do items and daily habits. Huh. It's called Habitica. Well, let's look it up, see if it's on the App Store. Habitica, there it is. Habitica, gamified. There's in-app purchases, that always worries me. Gamify Task Manager. All right. There, I'm downloading it. I'll look at it later. What's your preferred way of playing Seventh Continent? Solo or two to four player? I think, I think, I think uh, multiplayer because it's fun to enjoy the story with somebody else. 
In your last Q&A, you said if you could run a game company, you'd pick Asmodee and then sell it and come back to running the Dice Tower. <laughs> I like the Dice Tower. I really am excited about the Dice Tower, folks. I, I can't tell you how much I, I love this job. I don't love every aspect of it, right? Things don't always go right, you know, what we're here. But I like doing this. And, you know, it's exciting to me to see. I mean, I, you know, I would say a little over a year ago, I was sitting around and I said, you know what? Dice Tower is good. We're going to leave Dice Tower where it's at. And good. And you know what? No. I want to grow. And I'm telling you, I'm excited about the future. I'm not kidding when I'm, ex I'm, I'm so excited about our Gen Con announcement. Um, I'm excited about the other minor things that we have been changing and doing and things that are coming up. We just had a, a meeting about Dice Tower Con and how well that went, and that was exciting. I look forward to, there's things behind the scenes that are always changing that you guys don't notice, but will eventually make the show better as time goes by, and I'm really excited about all that. Tom, there was some hate on one of Mark's previews. Why can't people understand the difference between a review and a preview? Nah, it is what it is. I don't mean, you know, we, I, 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 we make the previews really obvious what they are, and I can't do much more than that. How many plays of a game should happen before expansions are introduced? Enough. Um... Hey, Tom, how can I contact someone from Dice Tower to review my game for Kickstarter? If you want to find out about our Kickstarter previews, just email mark at dicetower.com. Jamie Stegmaier recently listed as 10 Hall of Fame designers, and at the end noted they were all men. Is there anything that the board game industry can do to help more female designers rise to prominence in the industry? I'm aware that there are female game designers out there, but when most people would think of famous designers, most people would probably list more men and women. That's true, and that's what's happening. And I hope that that changes. But I can't just suddenly, I can't grab a game from a female designer and say, this is amazing, we should play this because it's from a female designer. You have to wait till the games come. That means to, that they should have as many opportunities as everybody else. And uh, if uh, there's a design that's great, like Quirkle or Rise of Queensdale or things like that, we should call these games out and say these are fantastic games. Um, other than that, I think you'll see a shift in the industry as time goes by. Um, yeah, Friends had a decent theme song. Perfect Strangers? I don't know if I like that theme song as much. I think I like Charles in Charge better than Perfect Strangers theme song. Are you excited to try SEAL Team Flex? I think it's Flix, actually. Um, yeah, I think so. It's actually it's one of the games I'm taking gaming with me tonight. Do you own all the Marvel Legendary expansions, or did you get rid of some of them? I got rid of at least two. I think it might just be two. I got rid of Deadpool because it was a little too fourth wallish for me, and I got rid of um, the uh, not Original Sin, but whatever the the one with the people who all got hammers, like Thor. Um, that one was just okay for me. That was a villains one expansion, actually. What about the Chore Wars website, which turns common household chores into an RPG? Meh, not me. Um, what game took the longest to film a review for? Huh. Some games take... Anytime I do a big Kickstarter review, those always take a long time. Like, Who Goes There took a long time to do that review. Um, same thing with uh, Feudum and, you know, these games that I know a lot of people like and I'm going to take a lot of hate. Honestly, I, was, I didn't take a lot of hate on Feudum, but did with Who Goes There. But I'll tell you, I think about these reviews for a long time before I do them. Have you played Choose Your Own Adventure House of Danger? Sure, you can check out my uh, overview of it. There's a lot of people saying nice words. Thank you for the nice people. Um, do 
You always say enough. Have you played a game many times but still th not thought it was enough even though the review was due? A game that you never get enough plays because of so much stuff? No. Um, equality and opportunity doesn't automatically mean equality and outcome. I don't disagree with that. That's true. That's a true statement. But at this point in time, I'm not sure. I am I'm really doing my best to be as inclusive and involving as possible on the Dice Tower. That is what I control and that is what I can work with. And I believe I've done it as much as I can. Maybe not, I shouldn't say as much as I can. I, I'm sure I can do more and we will continue to do so here on the Dice Tower continually. Um, but I can't pick the people to design the games. All I can do is review the games that come in. I'm not gonna give, when I review a game, I don't care who the designer is. I mean, I, I should say that if it's a designer I know, I'm like, Ooh, I hope this is good, right? But I don't review the game better or worse based on that designer or not, whether they're awesome or not, whether I like them, whether I'm friends with them, which has led to some awkward times where it was a friend of mine and I smashed the game, right? I don't look at any of that. So if you think we should have more female designers in the industry, then start encouraging people you know to design games. That's what you do. That's what we can do in that regard. Are you excited Shark Week is next week? No, my lack of enthusiasm for that is really strong. I think my uh, computer accidentally turned on one of the Shark Nados the other day. <laughs> I'm sorry that people who like sharks, that's like their movie. They have Jaws, which is critically acclaimed, but you know, you can only watch Jaws so many times. And then you got Shark <laughs> I'm sorry, that's all you have. All right. Um, yes, I know there's a lot of other shark movies. Who cares? A Team and Knight Rider. Yeah, Knight Rider's okay, and A Team's a great theme song. But you know, actually, Knight Rider, the, the theme for um, the, uh, the helicopter, um, Airwolf, that, that's a great theme song. Hmm. I like, I like Airwolf better than Knight Rider, but they're similar songs. Hi, Tom, is there a way for me to sell someone on auction bidding games like High Society, Modern Art, etc.? Their complaints are that the games are too mathy or it makes my head hurt. No, if they don't like it, play something else with them. Did Chief Sokotoa make an appearance at Dice Tower Con? He will have made an appearance at Dice Tower Con 20. Um, and he was briefly at this one because we had to go over some of the, um, the missions that, well, we've already done them, that we would do directly after Dice Tower, uh, Dice Tower Con. Um, I didn't have a chance to play games, and uh, he's not really a kind of a guy who wants to go in public eye very much. I mean, he's in the eye all the time, but you wouldn't recognize him. So, uh, yeah, I just real briefly didn't, didn't play any games. Talked to him. I think we, we ate a burger or something. Fear Itself. Yes, that's one of the expansions I got rid of for Marvel Legendary. Um... What do you think about Bryce's Law? The more thematic a game, the longer the setup. That law doesn't really make any sense at all, honestly, because, I mean, have you played, like, Roads and Boats and things like that? Mm. All right. I wish there was a good basketball-themed board game. Why is it so difficult for sports to translate well into a good game? Because sports are fast. They're back, 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 back and forth, back and forth. And they're based on physical skill, which is a hard thing to translate into a board game. They just don't translate well. Racing translates fairly well. Most board game ex uh, experiences don't. There's a few good baseballs, uh, football games. I can't think of a basketball one other than basketball, but that's more about hiring the team. And that's the thing. You know, when you play video games, they're really fast. There are games about, and video games about, making a team and picking the plays and all that, that sort of thing's possible, but sports are too fast to be translated well into sports games. Not to mention the demand for sports game is really low. Any chance you trade any stores or food from here in Pennsylvania, even up for Publix, I'm craving a sub. Publix is pretty good, but if you live in Pennsylvania, I don't wanna hear nothing because you have some amazing sandwich places in Pennsylvania. You have hoagies there. Um, uh, 
let's see, now that you only use the big hammer for bad games, are you considering upgrading its destructive power, some spikes on the end, etc.? I'm not trying to destroy my table. <laughs> Tom, what are your top tips for avoiding a bad Kickstarter? That's a good question. Okay, so avoiding a bad Kickstarter. Now, avoiding a scam is hard to do. So I know everyone's talking about the over overturn thing right now. Um, if you stay plugged into the board game community, this stuff kind of pops up. So you can see that. Um, did they deliver their previous Kickstarters? Is it their first one? That's always a hard call, right? When it's their first one. How much is available there? Is the full rule book ready? If it's not, I'm kind of out at that point. Um, did they get people to review their game? I don't care what those reviews are, right? I don't care if the reviews are paid for or the previews and all that stuff. I don't care about that. If they went to the trouble to do that, then it's, now I have the uh, ability on a personal level, I'll talk to these previews and say, was it really good or not? You know, so that's, not everyone can do that, right? And it's unfortunate we don't have kind of a reviewer of Kickstarter, but I don't know how it would work because it would be a horrible job. Um, but yeah, just keep an eye on the comments. Are, does it seem too good to be true? Then it probably is. Well, how come you no longer wear glasses? Oh, I got LASIK um, a couple years ago. I saw the chief eating fish at the steakhouse. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. What are your thoughts on all the errors on the board of the new Spectre Ops game? Well, it has errors for sure, but uh, I think the game is still playable with those. And I'm slightly forgiving of errors in anything. Like I was just reading a rule book and it had some words misspelled. I don't like when that happens, right? It's not great. And it's especially when it's gameplay altering, that's problematic. But I very rarely get on a company's case about this because I worked in a publishing house for several years. And I, at the publishing house, there were people who wrote the books and they were proofread and then they were proofread again. And then they, they etched them on plates and those plates were printed and then those people proofread it. And then the, the books were printed and it came down and there I was at the end of the line and I was doing quality control and I was going through these books and mistakes still made it through. Mistakes can make it through. There's such a thing as human error. For the Dice Tower Awards, have you considered nominating the person rather than the game for art, as in the best artist rather than best artwork to recognize artists who do several games a year? No, we pick the best game. I don't think it's fair if someone does two games and someone else has one, so ooh, they're twice as good. Nah, I don't care about that. I want to know the game with the best artwork. Someone says the Dice Tower Awards take into account how good a rule book is. We take into account a lot of things when it comes to picking the games, and mostly, though, is it fun to play? Receiving so many games, aren't you bothered that you might miss something interesting because you've not heard about the game, the designer, the game doesn't have good graphic presentation? No, I'm not. Uh, and there's several reasons for that. I mean, uh, people say, you know, you might miss something. Sure, I, I, I might. But if I miss something because it's bad graphic presentation, that's on the publisher. I, you know, it is what it is. So they, they made an ugly looking game. Your problem. Uh, and other than that, though, if a game get, I, I have my ear pretty close to the ground in board gaming, and so if a, uh, you know, a game's getting talked about a lot by different people, I'll say, oh, maybe I'll try that one out. Why is, oh, excuse me, why is Hasbro so popular when they use such cheap components? Yeah, same reason McDonald's is popular. What do you think about publishers exclusively selling their games through Kickstarter? Nah, that's how they're doing it. You know, this gets asked all the time. I don't, I mean, I, I think that's probably part of the way of the future. 
I think we're, I mean, when you sell your games direct, you make a whole lot more money. It's a whole lot more work, right, to not go through a distributor and use them. So, you I mean, you, you are going to have to pay for that more money and stuff, but it's a lot of people are doing it. I hope I get to meet you while on the cruise. Sorry if I freak out a little. I think you're a stand-up guy, at least of which has to do with gaming. Well, I'm trying to stand up more, but I do still tend to sit more often than I should. No yawning. You're making me sleepy. It's almost 1 a.m. there. Then go to bed. What do you think about publishers asking to take reviews down because they're negative? No. Hands down, no. I will always, I'm sorry, but if I made a major mistake in understanding the game, then that's one thing. But if I don't like a game, I'm sorry, I will not take the review down. Very rarely, very rarely has that even been asked to me. Let's see. Dino Dunk is a fun dexterity basketball game. Sure, you can do um, <laughs> dexterity games for sports games. That will work probably better than anything else because it's the closest to real time that there is. You attend WBC one year. Is that like a historical statement? Or maybe, it's, maybe you meant to say you should. It's not just about competitive play. There's a huge room for open gaming. Sure. But I don't want to go to a con where there's a huge room for open gaming. I want to go to a con where it's open gaming. And that's the thing. You know, I, I, again, I'm sure World Board Gaming Championship for the people who go, it's amazing and fun and fantastic. But I don't know that I'm interested in it. They're like, Tom, there's open gaming there. Great. Tell me a convention there's not open gaming at. That doesn't actually make the, you know, it, you, the selling point to me would be like, there's a ton of open gaming. And we already got that. There's three big cons that do a ton of open gaming. Dice Tower Con, obviously. And then there's uh, Board Game Geek, and there's Geek Way to the West. They're all like tons of open gaming. You know, so, and we got other ones. That, I mean, there's Shucks is up and coming. There's, you know, the Dice Tower Cruise. There's little cons all over the place that have tons of open gaming. So, Saying World Board Gaming Ship has open gaming is basically saying they have games. It should have open gaming. Um, so, other than that, though, I mean, I'm sure it's a fine con. I'm sure I'd have a good time there because I have a good time at every con. But it just doesn't fit in my schedule right now. Hey, Tom, I want to go on the cruise in 2020. Any tips for planning or information that I should look for? Uh, we'll announce it soon, I guess. Has UK Games Expo video of the Dice Tower show been put on YouTube yet? No, because I haven't got it from them yet. I got one of them just today. I got the uh, designer panel that I did. So hopefully we'll get the other one soon and we'll post those to our channel at some point. So the designer panel, you'll probably see that go up sometime this week. What? Am I caught up on questions? Yeehaw! I guess I'll wait for some more to come in. I know I'm not answering every question. I'm sorry. Uh, but I will try to answer as many as I can. But some of these questions get asked a lot. And just so you know, if you're asking a question like, what do you think about this game? If I've done a review on it, I usually don't answer those because that's hopefully the reason I did the review. Can I solve a Rubik's Cube? I cannot. Um, I mean, I suppose I put my mind to it, but no. Um, what game would you think, feel the most confident in the World Board Gaming Champions? Ah, uh, Captain Sonar. I've enjoyed the diversity of opinions and styles of your con contributors. What do you look for when adding a contributor? Well, I wait for people to come to me, but then it needs to be something different, and it needs to be as good as all the rest of my contributors. What are your general? Th what are your thoughts on owning a pet snake? Um, they're pretty much the same as owning a pet alligator or a pet tarantula, which is why snakes are fine. I'm not like 
phobic of snakes. I, when I go to the zoo, I'll hold the bow constrictor. I will, you know, I go to the reptile exhibit and look at the snakes and think they're neat. Do I want one in my house? No, not at all. Uh, let's see here. How could Z think Spirit Island was void of theme? Was he not feeling well during the review? You have to ask him that question. Are you now regularly attending Geekway to the West? I don't know. I went once. We will determine. I do think that you will see less of uh, the Dice Tower at conventions as the years go by, and you'll see more of us at our own conventions and things that we're, we're running on our own. Do you like avocado? That's ah, okay. I think it's overrated, but it's okay. Playing any new video games? No, I keep playing the same one all the time now um, until I finish it, which will be probably within a week or so, Crashlands. It's a iOS type game. I've been having a blast playing that. I just play it for a little bit, then do something else. Um, but that's a lot of fun for me. So when I finish Crashlands, I'll probably move on to something else. I think there's a new game just released for the Switch. Octagon, or so. it's like some new RPG I'm really intrigued with. So if that's the case, I'll probably jump onto that one. Burger King or Wendy's? I like Wendy's better, um, but I don't really go to either that much. Does the theme shine in root? It does. Any books on your summer reading list, or have you been too busy? No, 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 no. I, I'm actually just going back and rereading through some books I've done before. I just got through all the Brandon Sanderson books, so I'm looking for another series to jump into and start reading. So I'm just going back and rereading some old series and things like that. I haven't played Big Trouble in Little China. What are the types of challenges you face when trying to do a live play on YouTube? Uh, there's a lot of challenges. See, when you record things, you can go back and edit stuff out. You can't edit on YouTube. So the challenge is knowing the game really well, right? You got to know the game really well because anytime you look at the rule book, people will complain. And that, I guess that's the biggest, the biggest challenge about live streaming in general is just the people watching. They will complain about everything. You make any rules mistake, they catch it. And you look dumber than you are because people say, look, I can't believe you made that mistake there. I can't believe they made that mistake here. Well, if I came to your gaming sessions and stood there and watched your games like a hawk, I would probably catch things too. It's amplified and everything you do is amplified. If you have an argument in the game, if you get a little annoyed that you're losing or whatever in the game, it's amplified. So there's a lot of things about um, the whole uh, playing things live. And that's the, the biggest problem is you, you got to remember that you're live at every single point in time. Uh, get in line, Pete. All right, let's see. Do you wear the same hat when you review Rosenberg's games? No, I don't. I just pick a random hat when I do reviews. What's the best way to shuffle cards? I heard the riffle shuffle's really bad, but then how do you get a good shuffle? I don't think the riffle shuffle's bad. I mean, sure, it's going to wear your cards out maybe a little faster than other shuffles, but who cares? It works really well. I just don't care that much. If my cards get all, you know, uh, beat up, it's not a big deal. A lot of people just do this kind of shuffle, you know. Some people sort them out. Uh, well, they'll count them out in threes and fours. I found if I'm going to do that, the best way to do it is to start with five. So I count one, two, three, four, five. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And that keeps it from being so evenly mixed. I had a friend in college uh, who's a uh, district attorney now, um, but he would shuffle his deck. He'd be like, all right. I have my deck, I'm gonna shuffle it, I'm gonna sort them out by fours, and then threes, and then fives, and then it's the perfect shuffle. And I was like, but that's not random then. He's like, that's random. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> um, he was a much better player than I was, besides that. What about a pet monkey? 
you know, on, on, the, on the surface that sounds good. Like monkeys are cute, monkeys are fun, but uh, monkeys are a little filthy in general, and I'm not sure I'd want to own one. Mm. Octopath Traveler, that's the name of the game on Switch. Yeah, I'm really intrigued at trying that out. I'm really excited for your live playthrough of Empires of the Void 2. Was this always the plan to play with Ryan and that's why you never review it? Or was this something that came up recently? We'll never tell. Um, did you finish... Breath of the Wild, did you wind up defeating all four of the Divine Beasts? Yes and yes. It never even occurred to me that you could beat it without doing that. I just assumed you would do that. I went through, I didn't finish everything in the game. Like my daughter Holly, I watched her playing it. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's a motorcycle in the game? There's all kinds of stuff she has that I don't have. And even my, my youngest kids who are playing through it now, they really have a ton of stuff. They've hit so many shrines and things. But that's okay. I really enjoyed it. I'll probably go back and play through it again at some point. It was a lot of fun. Um, have you read the Wheel of Time series? I have. What's your favorite Sanderson book? I think we'd have to go with series. I mean, currently, the series that I'm reading through right now, um, I probably like the best. The Sorry, the name's just kind of... I just read three of his series in a row, right? Um, so the Mistborn trilogy is, is, is very high up there. I really like it. I like the Mistborn trilogy better than I like the Reckoners. Um, but I also really like the Stormlight Archive. And I think I like the Stormlight Archive better than Mistborn, which I didn't think would even be possible. But the Stormlight Archive, it, was, it started off... And I wasn't sure where it was going. And the first book for the first half is almost a slog. Um, and especially with one of the characters, I was like, um, does anything good ever happen to this character? But it's so worth it. That, that it's, I'm not saying it's, it's not like, it's hard to explain. It's not one of those things where I'm like, hey, the, the, the show gets better, I promise. No, it, it was good. It's good writing. There's good things that happen. But the payoff is so good and the ending of the first book is just phenomenally good and the then the second book in the series was good and the ending of that one was like why and then he, and then the third book I was like all right you, you you know this is great things are happening I'm really intrigued here but at this point you can't top the other books yes they could the ending of the third book I was like if I, I could watch this as a movie, I would have been like falling out of my chair. Speaking of falling out of the chairs, we just saw Ant-Man and Wasp, which was a really fun movie. I really liked it. Not sure if I like it better than the first one, but it was really good. But the ending, which I'm not spoiling at all, although it's not like it's a huge surprise. There's like a, an ending after, the, after the, the movie ends, blah, blah, blah. And then there's another ending almost right away. And... I was expecting this sort of thing to happen that happened in this ending, so it didn't like really surprise me, but my kids like started screaming practically at how horrified they were or and or surprised by it. I I enjoyed that. Tickled me pink. I like how much my kids are into the Marvel comics. You know, um, when I was a kid like comics, no one in my family, my brothers and sisters were not interested in comics, my parents were definitely not interested. Didn't really have anyone to share it with, right? Went to college, met some people, and was able to, you know, comics with them. Now I got kids. They're still not really into comics, um, but the Marvel comic universe, or my daughter, who's a Flash lover, um, they love going to those things, and I'm, I'm very pleased by that. Let's see here. Do you review a game in one take or multiple? Uh, it all depends. I do a lot of them in one take, but that's, I do a lot of them in multiple takes. I try to put it together so you can't tell. Um, what happened to your turtle hat? Uh, it, it's in the closet, I think. Uh, 
Let's see. Have you never received an invite to attend a convention in Italy? I have not. What was your favorite episode of Dice Tower History? The first, I think, just because it made me think about my childhood a lot, and that was fun to go back in time and think about that sort of thing. My friend Steve is getting married soon. I want to get him a board game for his bachelor party. I was thinking Pursuit of Happiness. Do you mean to play at the bachelor party? I don't know that I'd play Pursuit of Happiness, although I was at, who's, what bachelor party was I was at? at someone's bachelor party. And it was at my house, and it was board games. This was years ago when I was back in Korea. That's the last bachelor party I've been to. I guess I'm too old now to hang out with people who need to get married, or I don't get invited to these things. Um, I, I wouldn't go to your typical bachelor party, I guess. But I'd go to a board game-themed one. I didn't answer your question. I don't know. Opinion on the original Roller Coaster Tycoon? I love Roller Coaster Tycoon. Has Roller Coaster, Roller Toaster, Roller Coaster Tycoon 4 come out yet? I mean, I, I think I was not, like, really that jazzed about it because, oh, Roller to Coaster Tycoon World. Um, oh, that came out, like, ages ago. But it came out for Windows, which is why I never really, really uh, played it. Oh, it didn't do very well. Hmm. Well, there you go. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, anyhow, I'm really getting off track here in the Q&A. Uh, let's see here. How do you have time for books, video games, board games? I also run a large company of six kids. Oh, well, congratulations. Um, I don't know. Um, I read books all the time. I read books in the moments when I'm sitting somewhere on airplanes and cars. I read, read, read. I read before going to bed. Video games, I do the same thing, but just realize I said I was playing a video game. I didn't say I was playing video games. I'm playing a video game. I don't play them very much. Um, and then I spent time with my kids. Like last night I went home and I played some games with my kids. First I played uh, um, Space Base. One of my daughters sent a list in the work. These are games to bring home because they went to Dice Tower Con. And see, this is on me um, because I have these, I have three kids. I think I might have mentioned this in the last Q&A, but it definitely happened. I have, I, mean, I, have, I have six kids, three older kids and three younger kids. The three younger kids, I've been playing kids' games with them so long now that I forgot that they're, they're getting older now. They're 10 and 9, and they can handle some of these other games. I just really haven't played many with them. They went to Dice Tower Con and played them, and she'd come back, and she's like, I want these games. You know, I want this, this, this. And I was like, oh, I don't have all those. I can get some of them, but you like this? You might like this. So I took home Space Base, and I liked that. We also then played uh, The Wizard of Oz Unlock. I played that with my four, three of my daughters. We played that. And we did well in it. It didn't give as many stars, so I guess we didn't do well. But I felt like we did well. Um, it was a lot of fun, actually. I think it would be a different game if you had never heard of Wizard of Oz. But So there was a few things that were kind of obvious because you've read the book, I think. But there was also a lot of really good puzzles. And they did something I haven't seen in the, in the, done in the, in the game so far. Uh, let's see. Roller Coaster Tycoon series is now terrible. This game to play is Planet Coaster. Sounds like a restaurant. Alrighty, well, you know what? I think I'm going to end it now. So... Let's see, will you be available to play games at Gen Con? I have played games at Gen Con before, but I will probably not. There's a couple reasons. This Gen Con's gonna be even busier for me. I'm running the Dice Tower, I got meetings and things to do or run around. I mean, certainly come by the booth if you wanna see me, but we have two booths this year. See, 
we have our Dice Tower booth, but there's also one of the two sponsored charity auctions is the Jack Bass Memorial Fund. And so um, because of that, uh, I we're running a booth for the Jack Bass Memorial Fund too, so I'll be at that booth some of the times. So you can come by and see me there. But there's also different charity events, and I'm going to try to go to as many of these things as I possibly can. So that's just going to keep me, it's going to keep me busy and occupied uh, while at the convention. Do you wear different or funky socks? Hmm. Well, today I'm wearing burger socks in honor of me not eating burgers or fries at all. Mm. All righty. Well, that's it, folks. I know I probably didn't get to your question. You're probably annoyed. I'm sorry. Uh, but I'll be doing this again next week. Sam's doing a q and I think, later this week. And so keep an eye out for that. we got some videos coming out today. Most of them may come around around 1 or 2. Reviewing a couple games. Like I said, the expansion to... Um, to Near and Far. Also a really bad game, too. That's coming out today. All right, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Thanks so much for watching. You've been watching The Dice Tower. All right, Melody, let's see if you can get these. Okay, so I'm going to give you clues. And you need to figure out the who, what, and where. Okay? But you can't say it until the end. All right. All right, the person who this is about is an archer girl, very famous. And she's doing some weird workout thing with music at a convenience store, the most famous convenience store in the world. All right, so so what's the who? All right, I will I will accept Katniss, but it's Katniss Everdeen. All right, what is she doing? I don't think you know this. Doing Zumba? I don't know what Zumba is. I think I think that's working out music. Walmart? And I said convenience store. Oh, convenience store. That has two numbers as its name. Seven eleven. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's Oh, yeah, okay, here's one. A second. Where did it go? What I was just going to read. Oh. Well, that's not any good. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's try it again. This is really hard because it like shouts my own voice in my ears. And if you know there's one thing no one wants to hear, it's my voice. All right. Today's news story is about a person who takes pictures. And the, th the thing that they're having a hard time with is the thing all of us do with our phone. And you're trying to listen to it. So you pull something out of your pocket and it's a big mess. Then you have to deal with it. And then... This is all happening while they're riding something that doesn't have wheels, but it looks like it should have wheels, but instead it's doing something above the earth about 10 feet. That was not a very good clue. All right, so who? Photographer. Yes. With like earbuds. Uh, well, what's the act? What? Untangling wires. Yes, entangling at earbuds. Um, the thing that has no wheels. Uh, I'm counting that. Hovercraft. Hovercraft. Okay. Uh, we'll do one more. Eh, that's boring. That's boring. All right. Well. Okay, ready? All right, the culprit in our story today is somebody who likes to swing on a wrecking ball. And what she wants to do is to blow up places that people live in 
um, with a that same thing she was just riding on. And she's doing all this inside an object that people have in their houses that you turn upside down and white stuff falls down. All right. All right. Worker? All right, demolishing is the thing, yes. And where? Uh, in the hourglass? The timer? Ah, oh, no, snow globe. Oh, snow globe. Yeah, but I can see as a gamer that you would think <laughs> uh, the, the timer. Yeah, shake it. I don't know if this game is fun. Maybe. Doubtful. 